Skin I Live In. Skin I Live In is the Pedro Almodovi film, so that means you should be getting kind of excited. It stars Antonio Banderas and Alina Anaya. Alina Anaya plays Vera, the title character of Antonio Banderas' obsession. What we learn with Vera is that she's been trapped in Antonio Banderas' luxurious mansion which feels more like a dungeon half the time for around six years and we learn that she doesn't really want to be there anymore. But what else we learn is that Vera and Antonio Banderas actually have a mutual respect for each other. Almost a relationship. At this point we have early set on features of romanticism which is kind of very strange. This is a very traditional, almost very classy horror film which basically excuse modern conventions on horror films and older. The film has a, a really old-fashioned sense of romanticism between the two characters as if it was something from a 1940s, 1950s Dracula movie or frankly any vampire movie nowadays, just far more sexed up. As we continue through the film we learn that Antonio Banderas' madcap scientist has been doing pretty nasty stuff. It's rape, it's torture, it's all sorts of things. At this point we sort of get the idea that this is skewing modern traditions on sort of torture porn. It never goes too far to be uncomfortable in the sense that it's just a bunch of gore or someone getting drilled in the head. That's just a really bad example. More, it's an unsettling tone that's right the way through it because you never know what really is going to happen because you never know what Antonio Banderas might just do next. And then through the film we learn different ideas about why Vera has been there for so long, how she actually got there in the first place, why she hasn't been able to escape before, and why for the love of God Antonio Banderas' mother actually has stayed with him for that long even though she is known too well what has been going on. To talk about the skin I live in is actually a pretty damn complex job. The reason? There's a must keep secret twist, as it says on the poster. So you can really only skim the surface of the film to basically not give away what is essentially the joy of the skin I live in. The film? Pretty much an intoxicating mix of different genres, different pastiches, plenty of themes are brought in. Nothing to do with innocence though, so I was a bit disappointed. And if you know me, I'm pretty interested in that. So if you didn't get that joke, even though it's not a joke, then there you go. Been hankering for an art house horror film, here it is. Here's an idea to do with the skin I live in. Let's go to literature. One person has made this idea that literature is just about literature. It's about other people's work. The skin I live in is exactly the same, but with other films. It is a colossal amount of different ideas brought into the film and they seamlessly together make a whole. It isn't all of his personal themes that are coming through that is the main point of the film, but more it's to do with his own artistic impression of other films that have come before it, which heavily influence this film. We have ideas of voyeurism from Peeping Tom. We have ideas from uh, shaping yourself into what that person wants you to be like in the form of a woman from Vertigo. We have Hitchcock tropes, of course, and in my mind, if Argento was ever, ever to make a Hitchcock film, he never will now, he would make it like the skin I live in. And of course, it's to do with skin. It has a fascination to do with humans and odes to women. Where has skin been done before in film? So we have themes that have been in other films as well. We have ideas to do with uh, confounding sexuality, identity, obsession. We have uh, ideas to do with consequences and responsibility. And of course, you have other genres. We have ideas of Hitchcock tropes. We have ideas of Italian kitchen sink drama along the lines of sort of uh, Ray's Ravens. We also have ideas to do with thriller tropes which make something pretty different and unlike anything you'll see this year. Of course it's heavily traditional and heavily camp most of the time. Heavily self-conscious as well. When I was watching the film what it really reminded me was the overcooked nature of Black Swan mixed in with my absolute favourite film of this year, which is Takeshi Miike's 13 Assassins, a really traditional, really grimy and bloody samurai film. Is it as good in that traditional sense as 13 Assassins as a samurai film, as Skin I Live In would be as a classy old-fashioned horror film from like the 1970s, 1980s? No, it's not. Okay. If you put aside all the things that are just to be known about the film, themes, ideas, genres, a pastiche to make one really unique horror film, the joy of it is just to bask in it. This film is like a, a complete enigma, a jigsaw puzzle which is hard to piece together. At one time you'll be going in this direction, the other time you'll be going at that. 
at the beginning of the film, there's a different uh, perspective on why you feel uncomfortable throughout this first scene, and completely by the end you feel uncomfortable for a completely different reason. So the joy is working out the puzzle of the film. The joy is seeing something traditional and cool and gripping in a very odd, unique way. And that twist is entirely rewarding. You will not see it coming. You will think it's one thing, and then you will go, no fucking way. It's the things that don't particularly work for the film. Let's think of its ideas to do with humour. The humour is completely done throughout. It's done in Black Swan, for example. It's completely camp, and it knows it. Here we have incredibly self-conscious humour. We have ideas where it is completely alright for some mother to come in to her son saying, here's your fresh blood for the day. That's funny. That works. Then there's ideas to do with sort of a UN meeting for Antonio Banderas' um, breakthrough scientific uh, medical research. And in this sort of UN building, it's entirely filled with books. It's trying to sort of make fun of the idea that these are intellects who will have never read any of these books. That is obvious. And then there's ideas to do with his camera work where he's uh, focusing on musicians and all he's focusing on is his hands. The skin I live in has to be known for one thing. It's hugely enjoyable. Hugely enjoyable to work out what is actually going on. Hugely enjoyable to ravish in the performances. And if you don't go in with that idea of different pastiches, genres, themes, odes to women that has been in Albert Almodovi's previous works along the lines of Volver, Talk to Hers, Fly Flesh, uh, All About My Mother, it doesn't matter. So I would say take the film at face value. It is what it is and it's hugely enjoyable just being that.